Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Abbott. Well, sorry, you know my name. I'm here to talk to you about business I'm developing called the University of Manchester Engineering Analysts. Uh, so after coming back to academia from industry, I worked as an engineering consultant. Uh, my partner and I came up with an idea to bridge the gap between industry and academia. Uh, and the, the, the idea is to employ PhD researchers to use both commercial and cutting-edge uh, state-of-the-art tools uh, for simulation that we use and we develop here at the university to analyze the products of industrial clients uh, and validate whether their products are suitable for the job. Uh, so there's two benefits to this is, one, it would give PhD researchers experience with using industrial tools, working with industrial clients, and at the same time, for the university, uh, for the industry, uh, it would give them access to the cutting edge simulation tools that we develop here. Uh, for the university, this is a win-win because it means that the PhD students are more employable and it improves the uh, business engagement, which is a massive target for the university, and obviously they earn more money because they're invested in a profitable business. So just to give you an example explaining what makes the tools that we develop here so special, I'm with a group called the SPH group and we develop a tool that models uh, the impact of waves with offshore structures. Uh, it's, that, this is just one application. Uh, but using the commercial tools, they can't do it as well, as accurately and cost effectively as the simulation tools that we have. So to help me develop the business, I attended the Research to Innovator workshops. Uh, I learned a lot of business skills, starting from how to use a business model canvas, how to speak to uh, potential clients when I'm doing the customer discovery process. Um, and I attended a marine, uh, marine technology expo in Ottawa, uh, a Royal Aeronautical Society aviation, aviation uh, networking event in London. And I also met the CEO of an, imperial, of an imperial consultants who do something slightly similar to what I'm planning to do with uh, University of Manchester Engineering Apps. I need to work on the name as well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, another thing I discovered was that quite a few clients who need simulation, uh, they also need physical testing for validation of the final product. Uh, at the university, we've got massive uh, physical testing capabilities. We've got wind tunnels, we've got hydraulic flumes that you can use to model, uh, not to model, to um, investigate whether marine products are suitable for the job. Uh, so, luckily for me, Efrain Carpentero, who is not here today, is in Mexico, um, one of the leading experts in building renewable energy devices, and also using the flume. He's like the top guy using the flume, literally sits opposite me in the office. So, I jumped on him, got him on board, and we've had long discussions, and according to him, and he knows the most about the flume, it's used at max 10% of the time, so for research. Uh, that means it's just sat there uh, and isn't very well managed. So sometimes he goes in and he never knows what to expect, whether the equipment's working, whether it's not working. Uh, and it, sometimes it takes him days and weeks just to get everything up and running. Uh, and he's an expert, so new researchers go in and they can spend two, three months trying to set everything up. If you may have managers the flume and the testing facility, it will always be up to scratch because we'll need it to be up to scratch for the commercial ventures that we do. So that's a positive for the university to invest in this. Uh, for, the, for the simulation side of the business, we're planning to charge £90 an hour for the consultant's time, and this is in line with the industry average. So it's pretty much uh, how much consultants uh, charge for their hourly rate. The business model is very simple. So the customer comes to us, they say, this is my problem. We figure out how long it's going to take to solve their problem, to simulate it, uh, multiply that by our rate, and then invoice, not invoice them, quote them a price. So that's how it works. We'll also employ some professional simulation engineers to work with the PhD students to make sure that um, we're always able to take a project when projects come in. And this is very important. Like, delivery of projects in time needs to be uh, on time, basically. Otherwise, we won't get repeat business. This will also create an environment where the professionals can learn from the PhD researchers and vice versa. Uh, for the physical testing side, uh, so right now I'm just focusing on the flu, and I've done some investigation, and universities like Edinburgh and Plymouth, they charge £6,000 and £15,000 per day just to use the facility. So that doesn't come with the researcher, uh, with the an analysi an excuse me, with an analysis of the results, with reporting results, make making them meaning meaningful to the client. Uh, we're planning on charging £3,000 per day for the flu, 
and £150 per hour for the time spent by our experts uh, analysing the data and preparing the report, the report. So this gives us an advantage of the competitors in terms of cost. And once we get the clients, uh, they'll see the value of working with us because of the detailed level of analysis we can offer. Uh, I've also done some break-even analysis thanks to, with the help of Dan, who uh, here uh, a few weeks ago showed us how to actually do that. Uh, and I'm currently writing up a summarised business plan which I'll use to pitch my idea to the university and get them on board hopefully to invest in the business. For me it's a no-brainer because they'll get all the benefits of improved PhD student employability, improved business engagement and they capitalise on uh, facilities that are just sat there most of the time. Um, so the major thing I need right now is investment to back for year one and hopefully we'll be able to prove that it's a successful business. Thank you very much.